Here's Mackenzie Harley again talking about his American Sign Language course. Mackenzie, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for okay. inviting me here. Wow, wow, well, we're really pleased to have you. How did you come to learn sign language? Um, I knew um, a deaf man um, years ago, and I really got close to him and his wife. He was kind of like my other grandpa. And um, his wife was getting really severe arthritis in her knuckles. And so when I was younger, I thought I'd learn sign language so I could interpret for her when they came out to visit. Have you had further training since? I've been learning for about six years now. Um, I go to assemblies that are interpreted into sign language. I've gone to events where completely held in sign language. There is no spoken. Um, I have lots of friends who are deaf, hearing impaired, as well as been involved in sign language communities and who have been professional interpreters. Why is it important to learn sign language? There is one source that says the fourth largest language in the United States. So to me, I think it's for um, awareness to grow about a culture and about a growing language. People have to be learning to keep up with that and to make it grow. So I think it's a lot of it is exposure. Tell me about your course. It's geared toward people who work front desk, tourist jobs, um, customer service. But I mean, really, it's going to be very basic. So it's applicable to anyone who wants that initial foundation. So we won't go into a ton of different vocabularies. It's going to be signs that you should know, signs that you'll use a lot of. Um, it's going to talk about communication techniques. Um, the thought pattern is quite a bit different from English still. So we're going to kind of touch on that. What has learning sign language meant for you? I'm very attached to the culture now. Um, I think it's done, it opens up your eyes a lot. I mean, learning a second language, period. But getting into touch with that culture is a huge learning experience. Um, um, it's a big part of my upcoming trip this winter. I'm going to be leaving for three months to do volunteer work with sign language and with uh, deaf communities down in Central America. So what will you be doing in Honduras? I'm going to be offering f uh, free Bible education courses in sign language, but a big part of it's also going to be helping them attain fluency in sign language. Um, some of the smaller cities, it's, there's that big stigma around with it. So um, often deaf people are just kept back from any education. So sometimes they haven't learned total sign language yet. They've learned what they call home sign. So a big part of it is even teaching them their own sign language. Can you show me some signs? We'll do question words because those are my favorite because um, it's really easy to have facial expressions for a question. So this is what? Just shake your hands like this. Yeah, you can see it. And then there's um, where. And you notice the eyebrows is a huge part of it. You have to have that expression, that like completely puzzled look. This is who. Um, this is when. And this is why. Like that. Yeah. And the, the head tilt is essential when you do that one. Is sign language universal? A big part of sign language, once you get your basic signs down pat, is charading. So when you're telling a story, a lot of it is acting out what the subject is. But sometimes it's completely you can't understand. Um, I tried signing to a fellow once who learned ESL, which is English Sign Language, in American Sign Language, and he had no idea. The question was different. Britain and Australia, each one has its own, and I've tried signing the alphabet to people who know them, and they don't understand. So some of it, I mean, it's English Sign Language still, but completely different. Why would people take your course? Even if you know that little basic, hello, how are you, how can I help you, what do you need, they're going to appreciate that on one level. So right there, for a tourist, or from a business standpoint, you know, you've just kind of want a customer because they're going to appreciate that. Like I said, it is a growing language. There is career opportunities for people who are fluent in sign language. Um, so if you take a general course, learn some things, find out that you don't, you like the culture, you know, it gives you a chance to express yourself and that in English you can't. Um, that's going to give you up, open up doors and opportunities for you, definitely. I definitely encourage people to try it, at least. Um, give it a chance, look into it. It's really a beautiful culture. How is signing different than speaking? You have to lose any um, sensitivity to one people's reaction. Um, if they start laughing out loud at you or making noises, like you have to completely be numb to that, which is, that's a big part of it too, getting used to the culture that way. You have to lose all fear of expressing yourself physically. Um, everything that we take advantage of in English and spoken tone fluctuation, stuff like that, it's all in your face. So you have to be, you have to learn how to move muscles in your face you didn't know you had before. Definitely. Mackenzie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you again. The course will be held on November 13th at 2 p.m. at the Best Western. Sign up at Kiwa Crafts.